Hi beekeepers, today I'm making a video to talk about the single biggest mistake that new beekeepers make. And no, it doesn't have to do with mites or feeding or overwintering or any of that stuff. It has to do with picking the wrong hive. So what I thought I'd do is go over the different types of hives today, talk about the pros and the cons of each one and uh, why you would or wouldn't choose each one because you know no one hive is right for everybody. So that's what we're going to do today. And I'm going to start out with the Langstroth hive. And the reason I'm going to start out with it is because, well, let's start with the cons. <laughs> the first con is that um, you got to be careful about what you're doing with the Langstroth hive because it's a stacked box, which makes it susceptible to critters. And so I came out here to make this video, and our Langstroth hive here is uh, scattered across the field. And so I got to put that back together. And the reason I'm filming it this way is because none of these other hives were touched, right? But the Langstroth was destroyed. So one of the cons is that unless you're careful about the Langstroth, it's a stacked box that can get knocked over and drug around pretty easily by anything. Now, if it's a bear, you know, all these hives can be destroyed by a bear, but I suspect that this is a raccoon. Um, skunks can do this too, but because the box is drug off, I think it's a raccoon. Or maybe a small bear. But what I'll do is I'll put the box back together here, and then we'll talk about the pros and cons of, an, of Langstroth. All right, and now we've sort of got our Langstroth uh, assembled again. So let me talk about how it works and some of the pros and cons. Now, obviously, one of the cons is it's more susceptible to critters unless you ratchet strap it down and, and build a fancy hive stand. Um, it can be tipped over pretty easily and drug across the lawn, as we've seen. Now, we're missing a box and a few frames. I have no idea where they went. So I'll have to put a new few frames in there. So just side note, new beekeepers, make sure that your frames are always touching like this, okay? Otherwise, you're going to have a mess. So you always make sure that it's tight and full in there. Okay, some of the pros of this style of box, uh, this style of hive, is that it's what everybody uses. So there's a lot of knowledge out there, right? Another pro is that if you're going commercial, this is the way to go. This is absolutely the way to go because... These things palletize well, they're easy to move around. You know, you're using standard equipment, all these things, you can extract honey, you know, really easily. So if you're commercial, this is the way to go. Um, if you're in a situation where you're keeping bees and you wanna rely on other people for help, this is the way to go because other people will be able to come in and help you and they'll understand how to keep bees in this type of a hive. Um, beyond that, uh, using standard equipment and being kind of the standard so everybody knows about it um, the cons include it being heavy right each one of these frames can be five to ten to twenty pounds or whatever and so not twenty but five to ten pounds and so if you have ten ten pound frames full of honey that's a hundred pounds right and here at the high school as an example we use one deep and then we put mediums on there because um, the kids when they crack this open we don't want them lifting 65 70 pounds to inspect the hive Right? So that's kind of a problem, and we don't want that going on. And so if you have back issues, or maybe you're getting up there in, in age, that can be an issue. Now, another thing that you should think about is what's your beekeeping experience like? What's your inspection experience like? Once you crack it open, you're exposing, at a minimum, 10 frames, or 8 if you've got an 8-frame version. But if you've got two boxes, you're exposing 20 frames worth of bees and saying, here I am. So your inspections are going to be more exciting, shall we say. There's going to be a lot of bees flying around. Um, so they get aggravated a little bit more because more guard bees are aware that you're there, and things like that. So that's one of the cons. And then the other con, which is, I don't know if this is really a con or just a personal preference or an irritation of mine. Um, these boxes break apart all the time, right? Because you just basically got a box with no support on the top or bottom, it can it gets wobbly pretty quickly and so the corners are constantly a problem and you've got to be pretty gentle with them or you're going to have your boxes break apart so when you're lifting expecting and you know moving a 60 pound box you have to be gentle setting it down or you you break the corners off or or you have to repair the corners so that's kind of a con for me um the other thing in terms of what the bees see that may be a con is um, what does it look like when you add to this box right so eventually this lower box gets full and you're going to have to add. Now the general rule is when they start building on these outer frames then you add a box. 
and most beekeepers say yeah that's what you do when they start get to that outer frame and start building that's when you add a box well what are you at really doing though for the bees so the bees start building in here so they've got maybe 10 percent here this one isn't full it's about you know let's say 30 percent this one's probably 50 60 percent full and this one's maybe 80 you know 100 100 you know these are completely full 80 percent full so you can imagine um you know that that uh hive shape inside of there that uh, ball shape inside of there they don't fill up a hive com or a frame completely and then move to the next one they kind of get it full and go from the center uh, the middle and center out building a ball and when the ball reaches the edge there's still a lot of open space in there so even though they're building on the outside frames in the bottom box there's about i don't know 30 40 percent uh, open space in there. Now you're going to slap a new box on top. And so you're adding more than 100% uh, space to what they have already. Or you might slap a new box on the bottom. There's a debate. I prefer adding them to the bottom because bees naturally build from the top down. And I won't go into that. But wherever you add the box, you're adding a lot of space. And they have to defend that space from wax moths and small hive beetles and yellow jackets. You know, there's yellow jackets crawling around in here i don't know if you can see them but they have to defend all that space and so that becomes a problem for them so adding is a big problem and exposes you your hive if you don't have a strong hive to wax moths small hive beetles especially predators right so that's another con of the hive and before we leave the langstroth i want to point out one other thing um one of the advantages that I didn't really talk about is that because it is just a series of boxes and parts and things like that, when a piece goes bad um, or it gets old, you can individually replace those pieces pretty easily and swap, move things around without the bees being too aware of it. So that's a, a nice part for, especially as, as things age, it's really easy to move bees or move in new equipment whenever you need it. All right, with that, I think we're going to go on to the other hives. All right, the next type of hive that you may want to consider is called a Kenyan top bar. Now, a lot of people call this a top bar hive. There are different types of top bar hives. This is a Kenyan top bar. There's some uh, Warre hive, which is a top bar as well, which is a stacked box like the Langstroth. But this one is the most popular. And the reason it's popular is because of the horizontal orientation here. And what you're seeing um, is that instead of cracking the hive open and seeing you know a bunch of frames all at once and angry bees um, I've got this open a little bit already um, when you're doing an inspection you actually see just one frame of bees one half of one frame and one half of one frame there now this hive was actually um, inactive <laughs> and so I think a swarm maybe came in here and they're uh, rebuilding but the idea is that because you're only seeing one at a time it's a much gentler inspection. You don't have nearly as many bees um, around you as you normally would. So, um, like if you crack open a Langstroth hive. So, you can inspect one at a time. But one of the problems is, and you can see here, is that they will stick this comb to the side. And so your inspection always includes removing that stuck comb. And now, a lot of times, they won't stick it, um, but you always have to be ready to remove stuck comb from this hive. And that means you're sliding your hive tool along here. And then the other part is that when you pick up a uh, top bar, I'll pick up this one, it's just, the, the comb is just hanging from that little triangle there, and it's very easy for it to fall off, especially in hot weather. So you have to be really good about making sure that that uh, hot weather you don't get comb collapse and so you have to be very gentle when you pick it up you have to pick it straight up and you can't tilt it like this you have to tilt it like that or like that if you're gonna tilt it but you have to be very gentle with it so in terms of beekeeping technique this one requires a lot of finesse to it but it's a, a very gentle experience compared to the traditional um, Langstroth so that's the pro is that it's a, a gentle experience it's horizontal you're looking at you're only um, irritating basically one frame of bees at a time so it's a lot gentler than you know pulling 
cracking open a, a laying straw. The cons obviously are that you have to deal with the comb collapse, you have to get your hive tool in there and uh, free up the comb all the time. Um, and the other part of this is that in the winter, the bees naturally move up. So in a Langstroth, um, they cluster at the bottom and they'll crawl up to get honey over the course of the winter. There's no up here, right? So what you're relying on is them finding the honey. So this, this bar full of honey, the bees could be right here and they don't know that it's a bar full of honey here and they don't know which direction is up. So they might head this way. And sometimes they'll starve with a full hive of honey, but they'll be on this end. Now that can be solved by tilting up an end, but a lot of winter preparation involves making sure that they get through the winter, uh, tilting the hive and, and doing things like that so that they get through the winter. It's a little harder to overwinter in these top bar hives. Now, if you're in Northern Wisconsin where I am, you consider things like that. If you're in Florida, Texas or whatever, where you get, you know, a month of winter and it's, uh, you know, lows in the forties, nobody cares, the bees don't care. So um, that's basically the top bar hive and the pros and cons are basically that it's easier to inspect, it's gentler to inspect, um, and the cons are that you have to be more gentle to the, the comb, and you have to be prepared to deal with cross comb and comb collapse and things like that. You do have to visit the hive more often because you can't just add three bars. If you add three bars, you'll get a cross comb mess, right? You have to add them one at a time, you checkerboard them in. There are books that talk about how to maintain these hives. The other part of this is that when you're feeding, this one has a nice little jar for feeding um, in the hive. You have to do some kind of in-hive feeding. There's no real entrance feeding that's possible there, but that's not a bad thing either. So that's the top bar hive, and now we'll move on to some of these other hives. Okay, now let's talk about the horizontal Langstroth hive. Now this one's a little bit different. Usually a horizontal Langstroth is like that, parallel to the ground. This one's tilted, we'll get into that later. But a horizontal Langstroth attempts to take all the advantages of the gentle inspection of the horizontal hive, the, like the Canyon Top Bar, with the advantage of you're using Langstroth frames, standard equipment, so you can extract honey and uh, do things a little better than in a uh, Kenyan Top Bar. So one of the cons to the Kenyan Top Bar, which I didn't mention, is that extracting honey is harder. You have to crush and strain. You have to take that comb out of there, cut it out, crush it and strain it. That's the only way to get the honey out, well, primarily the way that people get the honey out of there. With a horizontal Langstroth, um, one of the pros is that you can use your standard Langstroth equipment, including the honey extractor. You use standard frames so you don't have to worry about cross combing nearly as much. Um, you can put a nuke in here. One of the disadvantages of the Kenyan Top Bar is that you can't put a nuke in there um, you have to kind of cut it down or do some weird stuff on the end, putting a box on the end. But with a horizontal Langstroth, you just put your regular nuke right in there. And so there's a lot of advantages to a horizontal Langstroth because it combines the advantages of a traditional Langstroth over there in terms of standard equipment and the advantages of the horizontal inspection being gentler. Now, obviously, if you're a commercial guy, you're not going to palletize these things, right? You're not going to move them around. They're not meant for that. So this, it's not a one-size-fits-all. But for the hobby beekeeper, backyard beekeeper, it's a really great option. Now, before we get into the hive, I want to talk about why this one is tilted. Um, bees build from the top down. So on this hive, they'll start up here and they'll build down. And then in the winter, they cluster at the bottom and they work their way up, consuming honey. Now... If we were to take this hive and we say, okay, this is a traditional coffin-shaped uh, long Langstroth. Okay, there, we just did that. Now the cluster is right here, and they're going to move up in the coldest of winter. They have about, you know, an inch of up. So basically what we're <clears throat> counting on, even both this and the Kenyan Top Bar, is that we won't have a protracted cold spell. Because in the deepest of cold, they only move up. They don't move, at, you know, side to side in any direction. And that's true in a standard Langstroth as well. <clears throat> By turning the hive like this, the cluster forms down here, and when they move up, they have a lot more up to go as they're getting their honey. So they can have a, a more protracted cold spell during the course of this winter and still survive in this. 
The other thing is that moisture is a problem in the winter because, again, if we're like this, the moisture floats up and basically forms a cloud right over the, the colony, and then it condenses somewhere. When it gets very cold, the, the dew point actually goes inside the hive, regardless of how well you insulate. And so it condenses right above the bees, falls right down through the cluster, and kills them. Now, with this hive, the moisture floats up, condenses, and drips down that side and down that side, and so it doesn't um, drip down through the cluster. So you want moisture because bees need moisture as well. So you don't want to get rid of the moisture. You want to control where it condenses and get rid of excess moisture, I guess is the way to say it. So th that's kind of how this this hive works and a couple of advantages. The entrance is back here and because the entrance is there and some issues with how small hive beetles work, it's a lot harder for small hive beetles to get in. There's a lot of little features, but the main thing is that this horizontal hive, this horizontal Langstroth hive, combines all the advantages of the horizontal Kenyan top bar with the advantages of using standard Langstroth uh, equipment. Now, there's also horizontal hives that are deeper, like a Layens, but that uses non-standard frames. You have to build your own frames, so you get some of the advantages of the horizontal um, stuff. You, they don't stick to the side because you're using frames, but you're building those frames. So, um, in my eyes, this is a little better, and the only advantage of the Layens is that it's deeper, and so by tilting your Langstroth like this, you get the advantage of the Layens depth, but you're using standard Langstroth equipment. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to take a, a look inside of here and talk about how it, you inspect it and some of the advantages. Okay, and I've opened up the lid here. This is called the Extreme Long Langstroth. It's my own design. Um, and there's videos on this. So you got this little shelf here, and you've got these cover boards. Um, and the idea is that the bees, you know, you're exposing however many frames you know, are covered by each one of these cover boards, so maybe three frames at a time. And there's a lot less bees flying around here, you know, it's just a more gentle experience inspecting. So again, the advantages to this is that it, that's great. Um, you have gentle inspections, you add horizontally. The disadvantage is that, you know, it's all one big box, and you have to kind of build it yourself, or you can buy them, but they're kind of pricey. Um, but you're not moving the boxes around, so they last a lot longer. Uh, the other thing is that when you have these hives, you can't manage them the same as you do with the Langstroth hive over there. Um, you add a couple frames at a time. And in addition to that, you manage the honey section separate from the brood. Now this hive is still building out uh, the brood chamber, and so there's honey and brood together, but eventually they'll, they'll build out to add some honey and so you add frames for the honey and add frames for brood and you keep adding back and forth like that. So um, it's a different management experience. You won't find as many people at your local beekeeping club that have any experience with it. If something goes wrong, they'll blame the hive and not, <laughs> you know, not uh, the other, the things that are really going on, like a mite count or something like that. So you still have to do all the same stuff with mites. Uh, there's a follower board in here this guy here which defines the end of the hive so you just move that as you add frames you just kind of move that out um, and you know throw another frame in there or two but this will require more visits because you're adding a couple frames at a time as opposed to you know slapping a box on uh, over there so th all these horizontal hives do a different type of uh, beekeeping where you just add a frame or two at a time and you can tell the bees here are a lot less irritated than um, in the other hives so that's just the nature of these horizontal hives is that the bees just are so much gentler and you don't have to deal with uh, quite as exciting of an experience while you're busy inspecting so that's the inside of this one uh, that one over there is basically the same thing I'm gonna open that one up and show you uh, a little bit in there too all right now one of the things we did with this hive again this is at the high school so or on the high school property so we put a little window in here just framed in a piece of plexiglass so we can come out here and the students don't actually have to suit up or anything. They can come here and look at bees and see them working in there. So that's a really neat feature. Um, really easy to do with these types of hives is to add that viewing window. So that's a real advantage in terms of educational things. Uh, this hole here I should mention, this is a bee escape. So when you do an inspection and you have bees around, you know, 
if that's going to happen, you'll get bees up here. So uh, that bee escape lets them get back down into the into the hive. So that's kind of the horizontal hive, and it doesn't matter if the hive is you know at an angle or like that. It's basically a horizontal Langstroth, and there are a lot of advantages. If I'm talking to somebody who's thinking about getting into bees. Uh, this is the one I point them to most often is the horizontal Langstroth because there are so many advantages and so few cons. The biggest problem is the winter thing, uh, getting them through the winter. And again, tilting the hive solves a lot of that problem. And then um, for the tilted hive, if you tilt one end up like that so they know where the honey is, that solves another uh, bunch of the problems too. So there are some really good options with horizontal Langstroth hives. And I don't want to seem too... Um, biased, I am obviously, but they're a really good option. Okay, now we come to the Parkinson hive, which obviously I'm biased about this, but what this hive seeks to do is have all the advantages of all the hives and none of the disadvantages. Well, for the most part. <laughs> uh, if you're going to palletize boxes and send them to um, California, this isn't the hive for you, right? This isn't commercial beekeepers, but if you're a backyard beekeeper, uh, this might be the hive for you. Um, part of the reason is that it has that horizontal experience of inspection. I'll show you that where you're inspecting and you're only exposing half a frame, half a frame of bees at a time. So it's a very gentle ex experience. Um, in addition to that, because of the way this is made, unlike those, um, you know, on these hives, you're exposing four or five frames. Here, you're only exposing one. Now, another advantage of this is that if you want to do top bar, you know, you're a fan of the Kenyan top bar and you want to do top bar and, and have that experience, you can put top bars in here too. Um, so then you can get a nuke, put it in uh, there and then do top bars right next to your nuke. So this can use top bars or Langstroth in the same hive or flow frames if you want to use those. So a lot of advantages. Uh, the disadvantages are obviously that there aren't a lot of them out there. You're truly going to be building this on your own. You're going to be on your own. Anybody at the bee club is going to say, what's that? They're not going to understand it. You know, some people, have, most people at the bee club have heard of top bars, have heard of horizontal Langstroths. They may not be using them, but at least they've heard of them. They won't even have heard of this. Um, but it's worth it. Um, it is the favorite hive here at the high school because um, we'll get into that. The inspection is just a lot gentler even than the horizontal hives. So let me explain how this works. You've got a, a base, and then these little things here are called frame holders, and each one holds a Langstroth frame or a top bar or a, a flow frame. And um, that these things are your hive. This is just the base. So let's take a look underneath the hood here. Um, before we do that, um, I don't think there's a colony in here. Um, we had a colony in this thing that got drug across the ground, but um, I don't think it's it survived. Anyway, there's an inspection door here, so you can see uh, because bees build from the top down, and again, it's angled down, any recent activity will be here, and it looks like our recent activity is, you know, that wasp. So anyway, um, you have a viewing window, so you can come down and see when they're building on this bottom frame, let you know when you need to add more. I have to do this with one hand so everything gets a lot more difficult. Um, so let's take a look under the hood here. When you lift this up, this is actually your hive. And so let's take a look at what we're seeing here. You've got this thing here, which is the side of the hive. And this, which is the equivalent of your inner cover and top. And this is the other side. This thing here is called an insulator frame. And what it does is, because this is at an angle, the air flows up, and then it goes here. Now the bees can put propolis in there, and during cold weather they do, and they block it off. And then to inspect this, you simply pull these apart. I'm going to pause this and pull them apart. It's a lot easier with two hands. Okay, so what I wanted to do is take this apart and um, show you what it looks like inside. Now I'm not sure what's going on here. I think this is either a, a swarm that arrived here, or, you know, it's gone queenless, but there's not a lot of going on in this hive. But the point is that um, you pull these frames apart, these frame holders apart, and uh, you can inspect the bees without holding the frames. Now, another part that's really nice is that, and it can't be understated how important this is, 
you pick this frame up like this here on the frame holder. So if you have a top bar going across there and the comb is stuck, it doesn't matter. You're picking it up here. It's, it's good to have that comb stuck so you don't have to deal with comb collapse. So if you're doing a top bar, it is a better top bar than a Kenyan top bar. You don't have to deal with comb collapse. You're peeling the comb off the side and you grab it from here. And this actually kind of turns into a frame, but the bees make their own entrance way along the edges and stuff like that. So it's a really good option. This part here is for ventilation, that little bee space, it's for ventilation. So ventilation goes up and out of the hive. So um, it's a very different experience uh, than the other hives. And you can see here that I'm inspecting and I've got exactly one frame open, you know, half of that frame and half of this frame over here. But all the rest of these are closed and so there's not, you know, like with the uh, horizontal hive over there, there were three or four frames open. Frames I'm moving around here. I'm only, I, while I'm moving around all the frames at once, only one frame is ever open. So even compared to those horizontal hives, it's a lot gentler than that in terms of inspection. Um, so it's kind of the best of both worlds, um, and that's why the high schoolers like it. That's why I like it. Um, but what I'm going to do is close this one up and kind of give a quick summary, and we'll call this video done. Okay, so in summary here, we've got the Langstroth hive, which is what everybody tends to use. Um, so that's one of its pros, is that everybody has some experience with the Langstroth, knows how to manage it, and you can get a lot of experience very quickly from uh, fellow beekeepers, and um, you know, it's practical, useful experience. It's, uh, if you're a commercial guy, this is the way to go, obviously adding boxes, palletizing, shipping to California, um, it's all, all uh, faster, quicker, better with this hive than any other option. Um, if you're a backyard beekeeper, you know, then you just have to be aware that the boxes are heavier. Um, when you're feeding, you shouldn't do an entrance feeder. If you do open feeding, that's fine. But if you do an in-frame feeding, every time you do crack it open to feed, you have, you know, eight or ten frames of bees staring at you. Inspections, obviously, uh, you're ripping a hive in half. So... <laughs> Bees are a little more excited, um, it's a little more busy, and uh, can be a little intimidating for new beekeepers. Um, so those are kind of the pros and the cons. Um, don't underestimate the fact that everybody knows how to deal with it. So when you're doing mite treatments, for instance, everybody knows how to do mite treatments. When you have small high beetle problems, there's a list of tricks. So there's a lot to, to be said for the fact that everybody does it. Um, but if you have a bad back, if you don't want to lift it, if you want to try something else, um, there are other options. So let's talk about those. <clears throat> we'll go over here to the Kenyan top bar and talk about that hive. And again, the summary on that hive is that it's a different inspection experience. It's a different maintenance experience. So again, your inspection is horizontal. So you're doing a frame at a time instead of, you know, opening up eight or ten at a time. Um, and that's a much more gentle experience. For the Kenyan top bar, um, you have to worry about, you know, the comb stuck to the side, right? The comb gets stuck to the side, and you have to deal with that. You have to deal with the uh, potential of comb collapse, especially in hot days. You'll pick a front, uh, bar up, and it'll just drop right into the hive if, um, if it's laden with honey in a hot day. Um, you have to be careful about management. Um, you can't use, you have to learn new management. You know, that you manage your brood section and your honey section, and you add bars in each. You have to worry about uh, cross comb a lot in this hive. You, you have to be very careful about how you add bars and not give them too much space or you'll get a cross comb mess. So again, this is a gentle uh, experience. It it's, uh, requires a lot of uh, hands-on, a lot of visits, and you know a lot of people like it. But one of the big issues when you come down to the end is that the only way to get honey out of this realistically is to crush the comb and strain it. And so that's uh, a big drawback for some people. It's a, a messy, sticky way to get honey. Okay, moving on to the long Langstroth, horizontal Langstroth. Um, you've got the advantages of the top bar with the one, you know, one bar or four bars at a time exposed. Um, so it's a gentler inspection experience. The advantage of using 
frames in there instead of top bars so you can extract honey easier you can get a nuke and put it in there you know with that top bar you can't put a nuke in there you got to dump the package in or you can put a nuke in but you got to saw it up and, and do strange things but the horizontal langstroth is basically the best of both worlds um, but obviously you're not going to palletize this you're not going to ship it off to california um, this is more for backyard beekeeping the problem with the traditional horizontal langstroth like that is that there's not a lot of vertical space in the winter so you have a really hard time keeping them through winter um, and so you got to do things like tilt the hive this one's naturally tilted so you don't have to worry about that as much and also it keeps the rain out keeps the skunks off of the uh, out of the entrance obviously since it's a bigger thing it's not as easy for a raccoon to tip over which is I think what happened to that one um, so there's a lot of pros to this one and um, it gives I think most backyard beekeepers the best option for, for success now the, the challenge of course is that you got to buy or build this yourself you can't just go to the store and buy it like you can with that hive so uh, there are some people that buy it, but obviously shipping something that giant is is not cost effective. So you're, you're going to end up building it, and you know that's one of its cons. So then moving on, we've got over here the Parkinson hive, and again we tried to make it so that we had all the pros of all the hives. So it's frame by frame inspection. Here you can put a nuke in and do top bars and so that's a huge thing if you're a top bar fan you need to be using this hive instead of a canyon top bar <laughs> because you don't have to worry about comb collapse they attach it to the side but they're attaching to these frame holders which you take out um and so you don't have comb collapse issues right uh you still have to crush and strain but uh if you don't want to crush and strain then use uh langstroth frames in there or use a flow frame in there so you can mix and match flow frames and langstroths so this one is, you know, kind of the best of all worlds, but the cons are that nobody else at your bee club is going to be have one. Um, so you're kind of on your own, but there's a, a community group. So the pros are, are many for this one. The cons are that, you know, it's, you're on your own. And, um, and that, inter that includes building it where all the frames, uh, frame holders and stand, you, you got to build it all, but the manual's out there and it's step-by-step. Step. So hopefully... At the end of the day, um, at the end of this video, you've got a better idea of what hive you want. And uh, importantly, there is no right answer, right? For some people, that's the best option. That Langstroth hive is absolutely the best option. For others, maybe you're wheelchair bound, right? This is a great option if you're wheelchair bound. Um, maybe you want to have a bunch of wax maybe you want the intimate beekeeping experience, this might be your best option. Maybe you don't like getting stung at all, <laughs> you don't want your fingers digging into a hive, this is your best option. Your fingers don't dig inside the hive. You never feel a bee on your fingers. If you've ever, I can't emphasize that enough, you don't actually feel bees on your hands. They're not crawling on your hands like they are with other hives with this one because you're grabbing those frame holders. So that's a real advantage to this, and that's one of the reasons it's a favorite here at the high school. So beyond these hives, there's an AZ hive, which is basically a Langstroth, but uh, things slide out the back. Uh, there's a Layens hive, which is basically uh, a deeper version of a horizontal Langstroth, and the idea there is that it gives them more vertical space. Now this obviously attempts it to give them that vertical space using Langstroth equipment, but there's a Layens hive out there as well. And then when we get to these top bars, um, in addition to the Kenyan top bar, there's a Ware top bar, which is a stacked, um, Langstroth, like a stacked Langstroth box, but it's a stacked box with top bars instead. So there's that kind of a top bar. In addition, I'm gonna uh, include what's called cathedral hives. Now cathedral hives are, instead of a flat bar across the top, it's a kind of a hexagon shape. So it's a half a frame, if you wanna think of it that way. So you get less comb collapse, but it's, it's like a hexagon shaped hive instead of flat on the top here. It goes, you know, like that. And that's a cathedral hive. And then there's a, a slanted cathedral hive, which I think is a patented thing called the colony keeper, which takes 
this idea and uses it with custom uh, cathedral um, frames and it, there's a custom mount for the ground and things like that so do your research find out what kind of beekeeping you want and make sure that you pick the right hive for you um, and the right hive for your style of beekeeping good luck and i hope this video was helpful